Wembley Stadium, White Hart Lane. These are all famous projects that have run seriously over schedule and seriously over budget. And in today's video, we're looking at how big projects are actually managed. All businesses or organizations really have to consider the idea of project management because most organizations or businesses undertake projects in some form or another. Now, of course, some businesses' whole raison d'etre is to create and finish projects. Builders would be a good example of this. They take on a project, they build it, their whole organization is set up to completing the project, be it a house or a train station. But then, of course, some businesses don't revolve around the idea of projects, but will have to undertake some kind of project management in one form or another. So imagine a small organization they have to move offices. That's a project that is going to have to be managed. And even so, in both of these businesses, we can see that project management, therefore, is vital. With your project-based business, of course, they have to manage their business well, otherwise they will go out of business. And even when it's a smaller project, such as an internal project, of course, it is still vital it's managed well. Otherwise, the moving offices could go awry. You wouldn't have your be able to operate as quickly as you'd hoped. And again, you could lose revenue. So let's have a look at a wider example. And we're going to talk now about Wembley and Multiplex. Now, Wembley Stadium is the iconic stadium in London, and in 2002, it was demolished to make way for a new stadium. The company that was tasked with rebuilding Wembley was the Australian firm Multiplex, and the English Football Association had agreed a construction contract with Multiplex for £445 million. Now, Wembley wasn't reopened until 2007, which is one year later than expected. Now, they didn't make a profit on this, but in fact, they actually spent £628 million on building the stadium, which meant a £183 million loss. So how can they have made such a loss? Well, the stadium was famous for the Wembley Arch, which is a load-bearing arch that hung over the whole stadium. And this is an incredibly innovative and new design and wasn't as easy to build as expected. And Multiplex were also the lowest bidder in the FA's tender process and had underestimated their costs. And so, what we have is a project management disaster with huge business ramifications for Multiplex and a big embarrassment for the English Football Association. So let's have a look at a definition of a project and the Association of Project Managers, mm, I didn't know there was one of those either, defines it as a human activity achieving a clear objective against a time scale. And it's also a term we use to describe an event that is out of the ordinary, something outside of our normal day-to-day -day repetitive work. So let's have a look now at some characteristics of projects. And the first one would be a one-off event. Now, this could be anything. Think, for example, maybe your house, you've had an extension built. That's not something you have every day of your life. It's not something that happens every year. It's a one-off event. Projects often have a clear objective as well. So if we stick with the idea of your extension, it may be that you want to build an extension for your kitchen, you want it to have glass doors, you want it to have four windows, and you want it to have a flat roof. That is the objective that you set out with at the beginning 
of the project. And when you have this kind of objective, it makes sense that you would also have a set time scale. You don't want the project going on and on and on and having nowhere to cook. You need to make sure that your project is going to be done when it's said it's going to be done. If we think back earlier to the Wembley example, they ran a year late. If you're talking about your own kitchen extension, a year late would mean that you didn't have a kitchen for a year. So it's important that a time scale is set at the beginning of a project. And to make sure that this runs efficiently, it's important that you have a project manager. And this project manager is the person in charge of controlling the project. So if it was your own extension, you might become the project manager. You decide where the budget goes, you make sure that the work has come in on time and that are going to hit the set time scale and are going to hit the objective. Of course, if you were making a much larger project, such as the Wembley, you would want someone that has experience because it's going to be a massive project. And of course, if you have a project manager, you also need a project team. These are the people that are actually going to execute the project. These are the people that are going to build your extension. While the project manager is the person that oversees them, these are the people that are actually going to do the labor and the work. And of course, you always have to consider with projects the resources that can be allocated. Because if you're going to have a kitchen extension, it's no good for the project team to cost hundreds of thousands of pounds. It's no good for the project manager to say, oh, we're going to have the best tiles and the best kitchen equipment that money can buy. The resources need to be set at the beginning of the project and a contract needs to be signed to make sure that everybody knows the resources available and who is liable for the resources if they go over budget. And finally, a project will also have the end customer. If we're talking about your kitchen extension, you would be the end customer. If we're talking about the Wembley example again, the English Football Association were the end customer. So there we go, that's the video on project management which is perfect for all of you studying for your e2 exams and if you want more videos on your SEMA studies specifically for e2 and the e3 syllabus be sure to like our channel or subscribe thank you very much and good luck with your revision